let's take a look at this bank reconciliation problem. We're given items A through G. Okay, the August 31st balance balance shown on the bank statement is 9829. So as part of our bank reconciliation, we drop that here. Maybe we can drop it on the left side, okay? There's a deposit in transit of 1266. Outstanding checks were 1907 there was interest credited to the account during August but it hasn't yet been recorded $106 there was a bank charge of $40 um, for checks that was made to the account during August although the company was expecting a charge the amount wasn't known until the bank statement arrived okay so that's a service charge that hasn't been recorded and in, in the process of, re of reviewing the canceled checks we see that, uh, that uh, a check issued to a supplier in payment of accounts payable of 625 was recorded as 345. Um, and the August 31st balance in the general ledger cash account before the reconciliation is 9403. All right, so I got the balance per bank on one side and the balance per book on the other. Now we've got to record the various transactions. Okay, so. Uh, in the way you approach this is you say, you know, what does the bank know that I don't know? That goes over here. What do I know that the bank doesn't know? That goes on this side. So we had deposits in transit of 1265. Um, there it is, item B, at August 31st. So we already have that recorded, but the bank doesn't. So we add that to the bank balance. There was interest earned of $106. The bank knows that. We haven't recorded it, so we put it on our side. Okay, now, we had outstanding checks of 1907. That means we've already recorded it. The bank doesn't know about them, so we put it on the bank side. And there was a check, a check charge of $40 that the bank knew about that we didn't know, know about. Okay, and you follow through this process. And the only thing you have left is the error in the recording amount and that's on our side. The bank processed it correctly. We recorded it wrong, so we've got to compute the difference between the 627 and the 345 and re record it correctly. When we're done, we have a reconciled balance on both sides, and they should match if we've done this correctly. Now, the thing to realize is anything on this side hasn't yet been adjusted on your book, so you've got to make a journal entry for that. So what do you do? Uh, you record miscellaneous expense for the $40 check charge. Um, you show the error in the recording amount. You've got to reflect that in the proper amount to accounts payable. Now, we recorded it for $345. It really was $627, so that reduces accounts payable by another $282. Uh, we record the interest revenue of $106 that we earned that we didn't know about. And then, of course, the difference of all of those gets plugged or forced to cash. Accountants don't like to use the word plugged, but if you think about it, it's adjusted to cash. Now you could make these entries individually, right? You could debit miscellaneous expense for 40 and credit cash, then debit accounts payable and credit cash, then um, credit interest revenue and debit cash, or you can do it as a compound entry, which is what you see, uh, which is how you see it's done here. Okay? Hopefully that was helpful for all of you.